Okay guys, so now that the Nexus 1000V has finished doing its pre-configuration setup script and is waiting for us at the command prompt, the only thing we need to make sure is that the machine that we're going to run the installation on has a latest version of Java. I'm running the latest version of Java 6 in this lab and if we go into our folder where we previously extracted our zip file for the Nexus 1000V you'll see under VSM we have a folder called installer underscore app and if we double click on that we have the Nexus 1000V dash install underscore CNX dot jar file so if we have Java installed we should be able to double click on this and it would launch uh, right away okay and our Cisco Nexus 1000V installer app has begun so as you can see from here we can do a complete installation from this installer app we can do virtual Ethernet module installations, which is actually the module that gets installed onto the ESXi host. Or we can do a vCenter server connection. And that's the one that we're going to be selecting. So there's a few prerequisites that appear here in the first window. And that's that the Nexus 1000V software must be installed correctly, which we've gone through and done already. The SSH connection must be enabled to the virtual supervisor module. And this is enabled by default when you first do the installation. The SVS domain must be configured on the machine, so we have configured that as one. And the user will require to enter vCenter and VSM administrator login credentials, which is fine. We will have all them and you should have them also. So let's click on next. And in this window, we're going to enter in the IP address of our vCenter server, the HTTPS port, and our username and password with administration rights. My vCenter server IP address is 192.168.1.101 and my user ID is administrator and I'll just enter in my password and we'll click next. So it's just going to attempt to connect to vCenter server. The vCenter server connection was successful so we've moved on to now point three. So our VSM IP address which is the IP address of our Nexus 1000V that we set earlier is 192.168.1.150 Our username is pre-populated with admin and we'll enter in our password. This is the password that we entered in previously during the installation of the Nexus 1000V and we'll click finish. As you can see just behind the window there are a few jobs completing in my vCenter server and the connection is successful. So in this window we've got a summary of what's been completed and from here we can just click close. I'll just minimize this window. So our Nexus 1000V is installed as a virtual machine. We have our connection through to vCenter server. So if we click on inventory, inventory and go down to networking. You'll see here under the switch folder and the switch distributed switch here is actually the Nexus 1000V. If we click on summary, we can see here that we've got total ports. This is the notes, Nexus, Cisco Nexus 1000V, manufacturer Cisco, and we've got a few uplinks, a few uh, quarantine ports, etc. So we don't have any configuration in there at the moment, obviously. We need to actually go through and do a few more things. Okay, so next thing what we're going to do is connect via PuTTY to our Nexus 1000V. So I'm going to connect to my 1.150 address. Yes to the security key. And I will log in with admin and my password. Let's expand this window. So first thing, if we do a show version. You can see that we're running Cisco Nexus 1000V, virtual supervisor module, the amount of RAM, the uptime, uh, the versions, file versions. So just like a physical switch. If we do a show run, one thing that happens out of the default config, it actually puts the switch into layer 3 mode. So if you're happy with using layer 3 mode on the switch, then that's fine. You can leave that. And that's just configured under SVS domain and SVS mode layer 3 and then interface management 0. But in the lab I'm going to change mine to layer 2. So I'm just going to go into configuration mode and change the mode to layer 2. So now I've got a fully working layer 2 switch. 
The next thing that we need to do is create a physical port profile uplink and this will be used to connect our VMware ESXi hosts into. Now to do that, in configuration mode, I'm going to type in port profile type Ethernet and the name of the port profile. So we might just call it VMware uplinks. Press enter. Next command is VMware port group. Enter. And normally it would create this port as a trunk port. So switch port mode trunk. And we'll give it MTU of 9000. No shutdown. And followed by a channel group command. Auto mode on. And you can see that we have an option to set Mac pinning. It's something like what you would use for the Cisco UCS service chassis. Depending on what uplink switch that you're using, it could be a Nexus, another Cisco Catalyst, a HP, a Dell, uh, any other kind of switch out there, and you are using port channeling, you'll be right to use the channel group auto mode on command. So we'll press enter. And last command to enable this is state enabled. And as you can see in the background here in my vCenter server, it has just created the port profile or the physical port profile called VMware uplinks. So now that we've created the physical port profile uplinks, we can now go ahead and create a port profile that we will use for our management network, VMware network, vMotion network, and our storage network. So to create the port profile, once again, we go port profile type is vethernet this time and the name of the port profile. We then type in VMware port group and this will usually be a access port so we're going to do switch port mode access and then the VLAN of the access port. So it's just complaining there on my switch that I'm using VLAN 1 for everything pretty much. So I'll ignore that for now. Next command is no shutdown and state enabled. And as you can see on the left hand side here, it's gone through and put my management network in. So I may just pause the video here and go and create the same thing for my vMotion storage and virtual machine networks. So I'll be using exactly the same commands as I've just typed in to go ahead and create my additional networks. So I'll pause the video now and come back again. Okay, I'm back. And we've gone through and configured the additional networks. So as you can see, we've got management, servers, storage, and vMotion. Now one last thing that I wanted to do before moving on to the next step is just to jump back into our port profile ethernet VMware uplinks. And in the Nexus 1000V, we have this concept of system VLANs. So the system VLANs, basically are the first VLANs that come up with the switch and will bypass any access lists, uh, QoS or any filtering type configurations that you might have going on. So the things that we want to configure as a system VLAN would be the Nexus control network, the Nexus packet network, perhaps any storage network. But as I'm only using uh, VLAN 1, I'll just type in system VLAN 1 and press enter. Sorry, before we can do that, we actually need to allow the specific VLANs on the trunk port of our uplink port profile. So with that, I'll just do switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1. Oh, sorry, I need to put it in specifically like 3967 and 4048 to 4093. So that is allowed all the VLANs on there and now I should be able to enter in my system VLAN 1 and there we go. The other good thing about the Nexus is that I can do a show run command from any configuration menu. Uh, I do not have to put a do in front of it which is really helpful. So I want to just do a show run port profile VMware uplinks and this is my configuration for this port profile. So now we're ready to move on to our next step, which is actually migrating our VMware host across from the traditional vSwitch 
across over to our Nexus 1000V virtual switch.